What happens when you cross a Jag XJR with a Tahoe? You get this, the Land Rover Range Rover Sport HSE, living somewhat awkwardly at the dicey intersection of off-road and on track. Let's go for a ride. Now let's talk about what moves this 5,670 pounds of beast. 4.4 liter dual overhead cam V8. 300 horsepower, 315 foot pounds of torque. As a result, zero to 60 is pushing nine seconds. That's in conjunction with a one choice only six speed automatic slush box. It's slippery and rubbery and wandery. One cure though, snap it over here on the left side of the gate to the sport mode. It tightens up and raises the shift points, makes the gearbox more decisive, significant improvement. You've got permanent four wheel drive in this vehicle. And of course a key Land Rover deal is this guy, the big old silver knob here. That's what you call your terrain response system. So you pop that knob up and then the left position as you see is pavement. And then you've got all kinds of other terrain conditions you can dial in here to select basically via a macro how to set up the vehicle's drivetrain and get the most out of its off-road abilities. Here's your electronic high-low for the transfer case. Ride height right here, you can go up and down and noticeably, by the way, this thing goes up and down like, it feels like six inches from top to bottom. And then this big yellow button here is your descent control. We have a luxury interior package on this car that has some non-tech stuff like fancy leather and wood. Also, it gives you heated front and rear seats. I'm amazed that those are an option. Shouldn't those be standard at 60 plus thousand dollars? You've also got a heated windshield, heated front washer jets, adaptive front lights, and check this out. They call it the cooler box. I'm thinking, okay, what does it get? A little bit cool? No, it gets cold. You can put sperm samples in there for a decade. Kind of a mixed bag on the cabin tech on this guy. First of all, the nav screen you see is stock. It's standard on this Range Rover Sport. Touch screen, large clear buttons. Um, it's pretty easy to use. I didn't even have to look at a manual to get this one figured out. Once you do get your address entered, the resolution on the screen is pretty good. Not best of class, but certainly not the worst. Also, notice among the modes here, you have not just navigation, but also 4x4 information, an elaborate screen confirming and showing how your all-wheel drive is working and how you've got it set up. Now, the audio system, while it sounds good, doesn't look good. There it is. It never shows up on the LCD. It's relegated to this ghetto of this little green and black LCD, very late 90s. It's a cramped display that has a lot of noise going on. Like when I go through my tone settings, look at this nonsense. That's no way to represent a 12 speaker, 550 watt Harman Kardon Logic 7 system, I don't think. Your sources are AM, FM, six disc built-in slot changer, aux jack somewhere, damned if I can find it, but there's a button for it. Satellite radio, Sirius, available as an option on this vehicle. No iPod adapter, no HD radio. All right, folks, hang on tight and cinch down your pith helmet. This is where many a brave man has died. The treacherous eastern face of Lombard Street. Crookedest in the world, they say. Good time to price our Range Rover Sport. $59,000 base. Look out, hairpin right. Uh, tech toys are relatively limited because the nav is standard. There's a one choice only audio system, our generally very nice Harman Kardon rig. $3,000 for the luxury package, which all I really care about is the fact that it's got a heated windshield and a very cold center fridge.